Hey guys, it's been a long time since my last video, but I've got a good one for you now. We're going to be going over the Remote Containers VS Code extension and Dev Containers. So first off, what is a Dev Container? A development container is a containerized environment used for development purposes. In the case of the Remote Containers extension, VS Code will spin up a Docker container with its own instance of VS Code server running that communicates with your local IDE. It'll then volume mount your source code to make it available within the container, providing you a fully featured, isolated development environment. So why would you want to use VS Code dev containers and get a fully featured, isolated environment? Whether you're getting started in a new project, coming back to an old project, or switching back and forth between multiple projects, one of the most frustrating experiences can be environment setup. I think we've all heard expressions like, works on my machine, this is where VS Code Dev Containers comes in. It allows you to provide an environment configuration to automatically run your development environment in a container with everything pre-configured. So how do you get started? Well, first you'll need an instance of Docker installed as well as VS Code, and if you're on Windows, the WSL2 backend. I won't be going over the setup of those in this video, but if you go to the Remote Containers Docs homepage, they have good information on how you can get started with that. Once you have Docker and VS Code installed on your machine, you're going to want to make sure you have the Remote Containers extension installed in VS Code, which should be installed by default with the latest version, but if you're on an older version, you may need to search for it manually. From here, we're going to want to open the command palette and type in Remote Containers Add Development Configuration Files and pick the container that most suits your project. In this case, we're running a simple React application, so I'm going to just pick the Node.js container. And we'll go with the Node 16 variant. We'll go with no additional features, and then that's going to auto-generate some files in this dev container folder and pop up in this window that says, do you want to reopen it in a container? We'll do that in a little bit, but first we're going to take a look at some of the auto-generated files that were created. So first off, we're going to take a look at the dev container JSON file that got generated. It has a name, which we'll rename to dev container EOC. It has a build object, which pr provides some information on how to build the development container. It has an object customizations VS code, which allows you to customize the VS code environment for the dev container. So for example, we can type in a settings here and we can type in workbench theme and choose Monokai, and that'll provide a default theme for our editor. It also allows you to provide a list of extensions that you want pre-installed with the container. So by default, it gives you the ESLint extension, but you can also search for more extensions in your extensions tab. But for example, if we want Prettier installed by default, we can right click it and add to the dev container JSON, and it'll add the correct slug to that array. It's much easier than going and trying to find the ID of the extension. The next option is forward ports. So if you need to access anything on localhost, you'll need to forward those ports through the dev container so that you can access them on your host machine. So for this example, I'm gonna be forwarding the port 3000 so that I can make port 3000 available on my host machine. Next up, we're going to want to run a post create command. We'll comment, uncomment this so that all of our node modules are installed as soon as the dev container is created. Next, we'll take a look at the Docker file that got generated in the dev container folder. You can see it's pretty lightweight with only two lines. It just pulls in the custom image that they have for VS Code dev containers, and then you're good to go. It does all the heavy lifting for you. They also have some commented out blocks to help you get started if you need to do any additional configuration. For example, if you want to install a global node module in your dev container, you can uncomment this last line. And let's say we want to install Lighthouse globally. We'll erase that and type in Lighthouse and we'll be able to use Lighthouse once we open up the dev container. You'll also see this base.docker file that got generated. I haven't been able to find much information on it, but for the most part, it seems like you can just leave it as is, and that's what I recommend.
Now that we've gone through all that configuration, let's build the container and see what it looks like inside. We're going to open the command palette and run remote containers, rebuild, and reopen in container. And the first time you do this, it's going to take a little bit of time. But on subsequent builds, it's going to be lightning quick because Docker is going to cache all of the steps involved. So we're going to wait for this to install. And voila, you can see our VS Code theme monokai was applied. We have this post create, create command of yarn install that was already executed. And we can see in our terminal, if we run node V, we're on node 16. We have our lighthouse version available. And if we open the command palette, we also have the prettier extension available to us. Awesome. And then finally, in this repo, I can show you that hot mo module reloading works because I can run yarn space example one start. And you'll see instantly it pulls it up in my browser. If we go back to the VS Code uh, browser, we can go to one of those relevant components and uh, we will make a change, save it, and we can see in our browser that change is made. Awesome. So to recap, once the dev container folder was set up, all I needed to do to get started in this repo was that single command, build the container. And that took care of everything. Didn't need to worry about configuring Node or NPM or Yarn, and it pre-installed Lighthouse CLI for us. It's awesome. I've been using dev containers for about a year now, and my experience has been extremely positive. Once set up, onboarding for your projects becomes extremely simple. Just install VS Code and Docker. That's it. No more dependencies, no more works on my machine problems, or making sure that you have the right package versions installed on your local host. If you take a look at my terminal window, you can see that I've never installed a node in WSL. I've never installed NPM. I don't have access to the Lighthouse CLI. This is awesome because it means I can keep my local host environment in a really clean state. If you want to simplify your setup or you find yourself constantly modifying your local environment when switching between projects, I strongly recommend you take a look at VS Code Dev Containers. I promise it will make your life easier.